There are certain events that have such significance that they are referred to as turning points of history. The life of Martin Luther would have such significance that it deserves to be thus classified. But sometimes big things come in small packages and sometimes major world events have humble beginnings. On the 10th of November, 1483, in the little town of Eisleben, Saxony, Germany, Martin Luther was born here in this house. As with the early apostles, Luther did not come from the wealthy, well-to-do classes, but from the ranks of poverty. Here in his home, we can see evidence of his family's humble beginnings. They were poor, but honest, industrious, and never dreamt that their son would grow up to become a famous figure in the history of the world. His father was a miner, working long hours to provide the means for Luther's education, hoping that he would one day become a lawyer. In spite of his father's hard work, the family was so poor that Luther would sometimes have to sing from door to door on the way to school in order to obtain food. As well as being the town that Luther was born in, Eisleben is also the town where Luther was baptized, here in the church of St. Peter and Paul. It's also the town where he preached his last sermon in the church of St. Andrew. And it's here in this town where he lived before passing away. Martin Luther enrolled in the University of Erfurt right here in the building behind me and diligently applied himself to his study. One day, he was in the university library and found a copy of the Latin Bible. He had never seen a Bible before, being ignorant of its very existence. He had heard portions read in worship, but had never seen the whole Bible. And now, for the first time in his life, he gazed upon it as a whole. Luther graduated with a BA in 1502, and three years later, in 1505, he attended this Augustinian monastery. His father was very disappointed in him, and this put strain on their relationship, and it was two years before father and son would be reconciled to each other again. It was an earnest desire to be free from sin and to find peace with God that led Luther to seek the monastic life. While here in the monastery, he would often spend time reading and studying God's Word. He had found a Bible chained to the convent wall, and it was to there that he would often spend time. Luther was a very pious monk, and if salvation could be obtained through his works, then he would most certainly have been entitled to it. Luther was the type of person that would have killed himself through fast, penances and abstinences had the gospel not been brought to his understanding. God brought a friend and helper in a man named Staupitz. He was a professor of religion at the University of Wittenberg and was the vicar general of the monastic order to which Luther belonged. Their history was a very long one, but the most important thing about their relationship was that Staupitz soon realized that Luther, in his desire to serve God fully, was not truly living a gospel-centered life. God used this faithful friend to set him on the right course with a clearer understanding of the gospel. From this part of Luther's life, we learn the importance of a spiritual mentor in someone else's life. If you are an older believer, then become a spiritual mentor in someone else's life. Take the time out intentionally to mentor someone else in, for you never know the impact of that work. Jesus mentored in 12 disciples and they changed the world. May we do likewise.